or wait or whatever it is. So uh, take that, Jeff Katz. <laughs> You know, you and your exercise and diet plan, I just eat something bad, and the next thing you know, I got eight-pack abs. But (laughs) thank you, Gary. It's 836 on this Monday morning. It's the 26th day of June, 2023. I'm John Reed, and I am so glad to be back with you um, on this Monday morning. I apologize for missing the show on Thursday and Friday. Gosh, I, I... I've only called out sick a few times um, in the six years I've been here, and I hate to do it, especially right after the primary elections. I mean, I made it through Wednesday, but, oh, gosh, it was rough. So um, hopefully this week will be a great week. And, um, you know, maybe if if I actually put in some time in the gym this week, uh, the, the weight loss will stay with me, and it will wind up being a good thing. Um, speaking of the primaries, I kind of anticipated on Tuesday night when I looked at the results and saw that Glenn Sturdivant, the former state senator from Chesterfield, had edged out the sitting state senator, Republican state senator, Amanda Chase, that, you know, I have this feeling that tomorrow, uh, which would have been Wednesday or Wednesday afternoon, Amanda Chase is going to say, hey, guys, I put you on notice several weeks ago that I didn't appreciate our campaign, her her campaign, um, not being allowed to be in the room when uh, I think the original uh, ballot machines were calibrated, if I remember correctly. And and, you know, Amanda Chase, she is, you know, I don't I don't think she's unfair. She's she is not going to just say, oh, well, Oh, you know, I'll try again next time. I mean, she's she's fought for other people. You got to expect that she's going to fight for herself. So Amanda Chase, the senator, is with us this morning, and I appreciate you coming on. I did you know, from my sick bed. I saw a lot of Facebook posts. Um, you know, some people attacking you, you trying to explain yourself. So I I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you in person. What is your position? What it looks like the balloting came in and you just barely lost to Glenn Sturdivant and made it maybe Tina Ramirez siphoned off some of your supporters, but the numbers look like you lost. So what is it that you're, you're saying this morning? And good morning to you, um, Senator well, Chase. I appreciate morning, it. John, and I'm so glad you're feeling better. We missed you. Oh, thank um, you. <laughs> um, listen, we're talking about 340 ballots short out of almost 22,000 votes Cass, and I really want to thank those who got out and supported me and voted for me and I'm fighting for them I'm not fighting for myself John I mean it would be much easier just to pack it up and you know take a break from politics for a while but that's not in my DNA I'm fighting for the people because they need a voice they want a a voice and the challenge that I have is nothing new as you mentioned this is an issue that I brought back up back on on May 15th during the early voting when we caught the newly elected chairwoman Leslie Haley who is an ethics attorney by the way works for the also works for the attorney general's office Um, she had endorsed Glenn Sturdivant prior to her becoming the unit chair so we knew that she was in it for Glenn I think she was there was a plan there for her to be installed two weeks uh, two months before the election and uh, when it came time for the, the general, the Chesterfield Registrar's Office to, by law, they are required to ask a Democrat representative and a Republican representative to be there to oversee what's called the logic and accuracy testing. Now, what is that? That is basically making sure that all the IT is correct, the ballots are running, uh, are accurately calculating. It's, it's an IT function, okay? Mm-hmm. And so... It is important. This is the foundation of the election. They were only testing the early voting machines. Now, what they're saying is, well, we followed the law. Well, yeah, you you followed that law, but you didn't follow it all the way out according to the State Board of Election Handbook. What happened was Leslie Haley, who is the chairwoman, as we said, of the Chisco County GOP, when she chose that one Republican to oversee that early certification process, she chose Glenn Sturdivant, campaign manager, who had been terminated from my campaign uh, a while back. So there was bad work. blood between Absolutely. you all, regardless of the campaign Absolutely. stuff. Okay. okay. He was, she was hired on by the Glenn Sturdivant campaign to take me out. And that's who they put in there 
as the one person representing the Republican Party to oversee that critical early voting process. And, and you know, I cried, cried about, I told you all this was going to happen. And well, we you did. You came on and, and made a point of this in one of our I – th- I think I had the three of you on three times in the weeks leading up to the primary, and you spent an entire session uh, telling us – you know, how frustrated you were that they had chosen this person. Did that ever get um, shaken out? I mean, it does seem odd to pick someone who is so uh, clearly connected to one of the three campaigns. Like, I would say, gosh, why would you pick Amanda's campaign manager if that person had been sent? So did did that ever get adjudicated? or? No, absolute cricket. And in fact, um, really what I want to point out, because they're coming back and they're saying, well, we didn't fi- we didn't violate the law. Well, if you go to Chapter 4, listen, <laughs> I've been in the legislature. I have served on Senate Privileges and Elections for four years, and I'm the chairwoman of the National Election Integrity Caucus. I know what questions to ask. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you go to Chapter 4, this is the very own, this is the Virginia State Board of Elections manual. It is a Bible if you will, of Virginia elections and how they're being conducted. And if you go to Chapter 4, there is a clarification point which talks about uh, representatives being president. And it says, if the general registrar permits the requesting candidate to attend the testing, he or she must, and that's the operative word, it's not shall, it's Mm -hmm. must, as soon as reasonable, reasonably possible, contact all other candidates for that office to provide an equal opportunity. That's what I'm upset about. Look, if I come up short votes, and I've even had some people say, well, you know, he won, uh, he's still going to win. I don't care. That's not the point of it. The po- and, and actually, if we have found, even in 2021, that until the actual ballots are counted, which is not what's happening, mm-hmm. they are just looking at the electronic record, which we found up to in, in Prince William County alone that there was a 7% difference between the actual ballots counted and what the uh, electronic poll book books right. were saying. I mean, there's a difference. And so that's why we're saying we need a hand count of those early votes that took right, place. Well, let, let me ask you this, because as soon as you announced on um, the Internet yesterday, hey, I'm going to be on WRVA in the morning, of course, everybody started hitting me up um, saying, I'm, make sure you ask Amanda this, because... You know, they they don't like what you're doing. And the question that I'm supposed to ask you, so I'm going to ask it and you tell me what your answer is. Ask Senator Chase, wasn't her campaign given a day to observe machine testing? And isn't it true the party can only have one observer present at a time and all they do is observe? So I I think I've answered that question. And the answer is, is this. Our campaign was never notified. We were never asked to participate. It wasn't until we raised such a fuss with the certification of the early voting computers. Okay. There was a second testing that took place with the um, voting computers that were going to be for the used for the general election. And Leslie Haley sent out an email and said, submit your names by 5 o'clock on Friday, which we did. They showed up. They were kicked out. They were not allowed in there when they started that morning of the certification process of the early voting computers until one o'clock that afternoon when I had to get an attorney involved and had uh, who called Susan Beals, uh, commissioner of the state board of elections. And they finally allowed one of my representatives in there after they had already uh, spent half of a day certifying the election process. Look, we've seen some, some drives in, inserted in these computers there have all been all types of shenanigans that we have mm-hmm. seen. The people do not trust these voting tabulators. They don't trust the voting computers. Do the you think want- this was stolen from you, or or do you are you just saying I want to make sure that the letter of the law is followed? Those are two different things, and both they of really- them are legitimate if you're if you're worried about them. But I guess, what I'm I- saying, is I my campaign and the people I represent, they were denied the opportunity to be present Mm -hmm. to ensure that there were that everything was on the up and up before the election began we can't claim anything because we weren't there Hmm. so your 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 attitude at 8 45 this morning um almost a week after the election is that it's 
it, we're going to adjudicate whether you were given the access that you should have been given under law, but you're not going so far as to say, I think that somebody manufactured 300 plus votes or conni- oh, it was conniving to try to make sure that in the end that you would lose by a, a fraction. Well, I'm not going to, um, you know, uh, say yes or no to that because we just don't know. Okay. I okay. Mean, yeah. I know that there was a definite, there were, there were people put in place from the commissioner of the state board of elections to one of the members in the Chesterfield uh, board of elections members that the Republican representative, um, I, I think there were things in place, everything from the installation of Leslie Haley as the chairwoman of the Chesterfield GOP, all these things were done and put in place because remember it's, we always talk about it's it's not um, how many people show up to vote, it's who counts the votes. There are things, there are decisions that can be made along the way, as we've seen in the case with Leslie Haley, who chose, by the way, Lauren Fulcher was the largest donor for Glenn Sturdivant. She was not only his campaign manager, she was the largest donor. There was a clear conflict of interest. And any person off the street that I talk to, because I always say, what, what's the reasonable test to the average person that's not even involved in politics? Yeah, yeah. They're all 100%. This is complete foul play. The only people are denying that Leslie Haley and the start of campaign did anything wrong were the political hacks yeah. and the consultants that are in it for Glenn Sturdivant. The Dominion Energy he threw $125,000 plus. Yeah. Well, you know, into- Senator okay. Chase, I, I have appreciated – all the times you've come on the show and you've never backed away, even when things were really ugly and it might have been easier to say, you know what, let's not get on the radio. You've come on the radio. So I appreciate that. And I have to tell you, I didn't know how this was going to turn out because some people have decided they don't like you. And, you know, you are a lightning rod. I kind of like the fact that you're a fighter, but some people don't. Um, but I, I'm, I am a little surprised that people would, wouldn't would realize Amanda is never going to let us get a, you know, we, we need to be like uh, car dealers in Las Vegas and show our hands <laughs> as often as possible that we're not palming cards here just to assure everybody, including Senator Chase, that we're not playing any games. And it seems like a couple of decisions might have been made here that I don't know. I, I wouldn't go so far as to accuse somebody of cheating, but it, it doesn't look good. So, well, yeah, I encourage you to come out to the next yeah. Chesterfield GOP business meeting. Whether you're a member or not, I mean, come and be a member. Come join and be a member. But tonight, they're at 6.30 p.m. at okay. Life Academy at 16801 Harrogate Road. Um, the Chesterfield GOP is meeting, and I'm calling for Leslie Haley to step down. All right. Well, listen, i got to run. They're about to kill me for running so long. I appreciate the chance to talk <laughs> I to you. I encourage everybody to come tonight. Yes, Absolutely. ma'am. Absolutely. Thank you for coming on. And I, I will give equal time tomorrow if anybody wants to uh, rebut this. It's 849. We're back with more in a moment on News Radio WRVA. Are you a caregiver for a family member? Comfort Keepers provide.